Halloween Hall. No steam engine on Sir Topham Hatt's railway likes the smelter's yard, especially in the dark and chilly nights of October. However, no steam engines find it more uncomfortable than those who narrowly avoided scrapping, such as Oliver. Though he knew he was safe in Sir Topham Hatt's hands, he still avoided the smelter's yard as if it were the plague. An unsettled shiver would rattle him to his frames, seeing rusting hulks unwillingly dumped there from the other railway, standing silent and still, hollow shells of once useful engines, until the grim diesels Airy and Bert would come for them. Sir Topham Hatt had few options for engines available to pick up fresh steel from the smelter's yard on Halloween, and was reluctant to choose Oliver to send alone. Needless to say, Oliver was not pleased. Steal from the smelters, he spluttered. I know it's a place you'd like to avoid, explains Sir Topham Hatt, but I cannot find other engines available, aside from one. But sir, if I go alone, the scrap diesels will... Don't worry, it's too much work for one tank engine to do alone anyway, added Sir Topham Hatt. So Thomas will be accompanying you to make sure those diesels behave themselves. Oliver grumbled away, and I'll have to make sure he behaves himself. Thomas was none too pleased either. Why should I have to go? And on Halloween too, I'll miss the party. Would you rather go to that awful eerie place alone? Oliver asked shortly. Thomas smirked. Oh, I see. You're afraid of the scrapyard ghosts, is that it? Pa! huffed Oliver. The smelters is no joke, you'll see. Thomas only chuckled and followed Oliver to the smelter's yard. But Thomas wasn't laughing when they puffed slowly through the scrapyard just outside the smelters. Night had fallen by now and the building's huge door stood ominously at the end of the long road was of loaded trucks and rusty engines. Both tank engines were very quiet. Ooh! came a distant ghostly moan. What was that? asked Thomas quickly. What? puzzled Oliver. Get out! came another whisper. Thomas and Oliver went silent, staring at each other wide-eyed. Suddenly, a flatbed beside them lurched forward violently. Without wasting a single puff of steam, both engines shot forward into the smelters in fright. They were too spooked to hear the two voices begin roaring with laughter. After that, Thomas and Oliver were quite on edge for the rest of their shunting. They nervously glanced about as they arranged their flatbeds of steel. At last, their train was ready. It was bound for Tidmouth Hall. Thomas had suggested they both turn around to pull the train. You won't have your fancy auto gear for this job, Ollie, he said cheekily. But secretly, he really wanted to keep his eyes peeled for ghosts. But secretly, he really wanted to keep his eyes peeled for ghosts. Just in case. Oliver grumbled quietly and rolled towards the turntable. The turntable was near the back of the smelters, so Thomas couldn't see Oliver. The table creaked and groaned, turning painfully slow. He wanted to get away from the smelters as soon as he could. A white tarp hung lazily above him on a crane's hook. The men couldn't be bothered to move it. Just as Oliver finished turning, without warning, it ripped and fell straight onto him. Oliver was in terror. He couldn't see who or what was around him. That does it! I've had enough! He cried. His driver had too, and Oliver darted towards the exit. Thomas's boiler went cold when he heard Oliver shout, but his firebox flared with terror at the white shape rushing toward him. Ghost engine! He shrieked, and ran away as fast as his wheels would carry him. He whistled in panic as he thundered through the sidings. The ghost! He's really after me this time! The white shape and a distorted whistling followed. Thomas heard diesel horns honking in horror and Arian Bird's engines revving to run away as fast as they could. It's real! They hollered together. Thomas, Airy, and Bert sped down the line without care, while Oliver sprinted to keep up, certain he was being chased himself. Signalmen were surprised. They scrambled to clear the line early for the engines running for their lives. 
Sir Topham Hatt had just left the annual Railway Board Halloween party. He was still in his costume and his train home on duck was held up at Tidmouth Hall. He was just about to step inside to crossly ask what the delay was when he heard frantic tooting and whistling in the distance. Tired, weary, but still terrified, Bert, Airy, and Thomas came panting out of the tunnel, still shouting about ghosts. At last, they stopped in the sidings. Duck, Sir Topham Hatt, and all the passengers were surprised. Goodness gracious, what's with all the noise? Duck cried. There's a g g ghost after us, Thomas shivered. The white tarped shape whooshed out of the tunnel and around the curve, heading right towards them. Suddenly, the tarp snagged on the station walk bridge and pulled right off, revealing Oliver underneath. Oliver screeched to a stop. Thomas and the Diesel Twins were very confused. Oliver, cried Thomas, you were the ghost. You thought I was a ghost, shrilled Oliver. How silly can you be, Thomas? You're the silly one for scaring us all to bits, Thomas fumed. If you ask me, you two were both silly, laughed Duck. Duck is quite right, boomed a familiar voice. He's Oliver and Thomas, you have caused mass confusion and several delays with your reckless running about, and you two haven't even delivered the steel. The two tank engines blushed and looked at their buffers. Then, Thomas had a thought. But if there was no ghost, then what was all that moaning at the smelters? Yes, Oliver wondered. And all that groaning too, Sir Topham Hat pondered, then shifted his gaze over to the two grim diesels. Are you two in any way involved in this? He bellowed angrily. We, we might have been involved somewhat, the Diesel stuttered. Somewhat is quite enough, Sir Topham Hat boomed. The twin Diesels gulped and said no more. All four of you engines shall return to finish your work first thing in the morning, thundered Sir Topham Hat. There will be no delays, and I shan't hear a peep about ghosts, or the only thing you'll have to fear is staying in your sheds. After hearing that, I don't think they'll ever let ghosts get the better of them again, do you?